So in tonight's session, we're going to be looking at a passage from Ezekiel. It's very fitting, given that we've just had Pentecost a few weeks ago, as it focuses on God's spirit, bringing new life, new breath into our bodies. Perhaps when we feel deadened in some way. As some of you may already know, the ancient Hebrew word for spirit is ruach, which also translates as breath. Spirit and breath are intertwined and cannot be separated according to this translation. In John's gospel, Jesus breathes on his disciples and we are told that the Holy Spirit then enters them. It is the same in the book of Genesis, right at the start of the Bible. God creates Adam and completes him with the breath of life. For us, this reality will therefore be uniquely personal and different. When we consider God's spirit as breath, we may desire rejuvenation for either our mental health our spiritual health, for any physical pain or trauma, or all of the above. And during this time of prayer, we will invite the Holy Spirit to join us as we breathe. Hopefully in turn, bringing us closer to God's presence that is at work within us and around us. Before I read out the passage, I'm going to gently guide us through a different breath, breath, breath exercise to get us connected to this breath within us. So make sure you are in a comfortable position, one that suits your body, and one that does not restrict your breathing if possible. enabling a straight spine. And let us begin by just taking a conscious, deep breath in and out. And return your breath to its natural pace. Just notice it and try not to change anything. Next time you breathe in, I would like you to say silently in your mind, I breathe in God's love. Hold at the top, perhaps for a few seconds, as you bask in this revitalizing love. And then as you breathe out, you may like to say to yourself, I breathe out God's peace. I breathe in God's love and I breathe out God's peace. Just do this on your own for a short while. We are noticing God with us, touching us with peace as we breathe.
And as we return our breathing to a natural pace now, and let go of those words just for a moment. I will read the scripture passage out slowly. I will put it up on the screen and if that's easier for you, um, then go ahead and read it there. The hand of the Lord was on me. He carried me away by spirit and set me down in the middle of a valley full of bones. He made me walk up and down and all around among them. There were vast quantities of these bones on the floor of the valley and they were completely dry. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, you know, Lord God. He said, prophesy over these bones. Say, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I am now going to make breath enter you and you will live. I shall put sinews on you, flesh will grow on you. I shall cover you with skin and give you breath and you will live. And you will know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been ordered. While I was prophesying, there was a noise, a clattering sound. It was the bones coming together. And as I looked, they were covered with sinews. Flesh was growing on them and skin was covering them. Yet there was no breath in them. The Lord asked me to prophesy to the breath, come from the four winds breath, breathe on these dead so that they can come to life. And the breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a great and immense army. You will know that I am the Lord when I raise you from your graves and put my spirit in you and you revive and I resettle you on your own soil. Allow whatever words or images that stood out to you from the passage to gently play within your mind for a moment.
Ezekiel is taken away by the Lord to this valley full of bones. He arrives in this unfamiliar space. It must have been dusty, dry, morbid, perhaps. We are told that there are vast quantities of bones as far as the eyes could see. Maybe you can visualise this scene now. How might Ezekiel have felt at being brought here? Ezekiel is then asked by God to prophesy over these bones so that they shall live. But when this miracle starts to happen, the bodies still have no breath within them. Thinking back over your week, were there any points where you felt like these bones? That you were going about your day, but were not present to God working around or within you? We lead very busy lives, some of us, and are overloaded with technology and anxieties about the current situation. Many kinds of things can cause us to feel de-energised, stuck or distant. Tap into your own reality of this now.
you may like to briefly mention in conversation to God these few things. Knowing that God is gentle and will bring peace. We then hear that the breath entered them and they came to life. This is the result of the second prophecy. God's spirit entering these bones in order that they may breathe again. I want you to now imagine in your mind's eye that you are looking in a full length mirror at your own reflection. You are gazing upon yourself just as you are in this moment. Don't worry if you feel fidgety. This is normal. Visualize your posture and the positions of your hands and your feet. As we have just been in touch with some feeling of lostness or deadness in recent days. You may find that your body is slouched or that the corners of your mouth are lowered into a slight frown. Whatever is your reality, just notice. Ezekiel watched the bodies begin to take a new breath. Keep on imagining your own reflection and watch yourself breathing naturally.
as you breathe in and out. Dwell for a moment on how this breath is keeping you alive. Imagine in whatever way is helpful for you. But as you gaze at yourself in the mirror, watching your chest or stomach expand and move, that God is that very breath which fills you and keeps you alive. And how are you affected by this awareness? Can you notice any changes in your posture? How is it for you to become aware of God's presence moving through you? If your mirror image still holds any tension, any restrictiveness, perhaps visualise God's spirit, move in and out of that area of the body where this tension still resides. Invite God's peaceful and gentle touch to ease this for you.
Let us leave our mirror image now. And just return to how you are now in this moment. You may like to wake up your toes and your fingers by wiggling them. Let us take one final deep breath in. and out. As we bring this time of prayer to a close, I'm going to put up a prayer on the screen and feel free to read it whilst you're on mute at home or just listen with your eyes closed as I read it for us. Our God, our breath, we give thanks for your spirit that keeps us alive each day. Our constant friend, a presence that rests within us through each season. As we venture through misty dark valleys, may we always remember that you are with us, refreshing us as we breathe in and out. Amen. <laughs>